Close your eyes and listen. Where does this melody take you? You're probably picturing beautiful fabrics full of colors fluttering in the wind. These magnificent textiles come from one incredible place, and that is South Asia. Namaste, everyone. This is Avanti Nagral, and today with Google Arts and Culture, we are going to venture into a family embroidery workshop where they're going to take us step by step through the ancestral technique of Kani Susni. Therefore, pay close attention, sit back, relax, and take some notes. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. So we're in the beautiful region of Jammu and Kashmir, which might ring a bell for some of you. It's where this wool, which gives rise to the famous fabric, is produced. The Big family works with the embroidery technique called Kani Susni, and they work and collaborate with several local artisans in the area. Okay, let's get down to work. So the creation of a pashmina shawl begins by turning the wool before spinning it. First, he cleans it with a wooden comb. This removes all the dust and stray hairs. Then he spins the yarn onto a chedka for it to get wound onto small spindles. Characterized by their simplicity, the tools in this creation process are usually manufactured by the family themselves. Once the yarns are made, they go through the dyeing process. Many families have their own dyeing unit, and later on they will go outside to dye the silk that's used in the embroidery. They can create up to 2,000 shades to apply to the threads, making these incredible color combinations. Okay, wait, not so fast. Because before they start embroidering, they spend time winding the threads and sorting them out by color. And when everything is in order, the weaving begins. You should know that they naturally choose the colors as they embroider, because if some colors don't fit together, they can immediately unravel it and start again. Okay, now we can move on to the old, simple, old-fashioned loom in the workshop to embroider the pashmina. This loom works with a system of petals that mark the movements of the threads. And as they weave, the fabric emerges stretched from the loom, which is the result of great concentration and meticulous precision. Once they're done, they print the desired design on the fabric's edges and the center. You might be wondering how. Well, they use carved walnut wood blocks. In the workshops, they have wood blocks with designs that they've been using for years, and honestly, the hardest part for me would be choosing from said designs. Then they will firmly mark the design on the fabric that they'll embroider later. Finally, it's time to start embroidering. The Bay family usually embroiders in their workshop, but for more affordable products, they also commission other artisans. They decorate the fabric slowly, but with incredible agility, always following the design that they've marked. And little by little, we see how the colors create these incredible textured shapes, thanks to the different layers of the thread. When completed, the embroidered cloth passes on to a dhubi, which is a traditional laundryman. And in their large rafts, called vat gadals, they wash the shawls thoroughly. For this, they need several hands and lots of water. Then, they dry the shawls in the open air. Finally, the process ends with ironing. They roll and press the shawl on a large rotating cylinder. As you can see, after months and sometimes even years of long, hard, laborious work, these Gunny Susni shells are finally finished and ready to sell. What do you think about the process and what is your favorite craft? And if crafting and exploring new hobbies is your thing, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and don't miss out on a single video. We will see you next time.